Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Assay at JonathanAssay.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, a new strategy for dating men over 40. We'll call it new like this, like you're looking through binoculars. Uh, really quickly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where we host a teleclass once a month where you can ask me questions directly of, or webinar, I should say. And also we have a private Facebook group where we interact with each other regularly and I shoot videos based on the questions you ask. So if you join the group today, check out the link below to VIP group, post a question, I'll answer it for you via video. All right, our topic, a new strategy for dating men over 40. Now, let me tell you where this video was birthed. And I wanna differentiate men in their 20s and 30s versus men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. And one of the differences between men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s is we come to the table with a lot of life experience. Or, yeah, life experience, I mean, it's pretty obvious. In other words, you know, when you're 20, you're practically a blank sheet of paper. I mean, when you're 24 years old, you've only been an adult for a few years in your life, whereas someone in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, they've been an adult a lot longer. And with all our adult experience comes all the armor, all the crap, all that stuff that makes it difficult to really connect with another human being. I know for me personally, I'm facing a couple big issues in my own life. Those of you who know me know I lost my 19-year-old son, Connor, in 2018. And, and it makes it difficult to really connect because I, I have this almost this inherent mistrust that someone will leave me right now. And I'm, I'm saying this, I, I recognize cognitively that isn't true, but emotionally that feels true. Now to make matters worse, I'm a dating and relationship coach and means that I analyze everything. I overanalyze everything. And if you can relate to that, I, I'm gonna say this is one of the differences for folks in their 40s, 50s, and 60s versus when we're in our 20s and 30s. We come to the table with life experience. And for many of us, the life experience has, has had some pain in it. And if you can relate, please post a comment because you know, I know I'm feeling pain and I know many of you are too for a variety of different reasons. It doesn't have to be losing a child. It could be for a variety of different reasons. Um, recently, by the way, speaking of Connor, I just want to say I've introduced a new little pet to my repertoire. This is Salty. This is Salty. Uh, that's Connor's nickname. Nick, his nickname was Salty. And so I've, I've introduced a new addition to our videos. Uh, if you watch some previous ones, uh, you might have noticed that. And so I want to talk about a new strategy. And I say new strategy in that we've been so conditioned that men are the leaders of the relationship, that they're chivalrous and they know what they're doing. And, you know, if he's not confident, then I don't want to spend two shakes with him. You know, and, and I'm saying this almost a little gruff because I've noticed this significantly with so many women and why they're frustrated in the dating realm. So I want, I want to invite everyone to approach dating from a completely new perspective. And first, I want to take out the genders. Take out the genders. Yes, a man has a penis, a woman has a vagina, and there are different gender, there are gender differences. But at the reality, we, we're all in our soul right here, we're all the same. We're the, we're the same at a soul level. So I want to invite you to start looking at dating from a soul perspective. And part of that is going to require, on some level, kind of discarding all the past and enter the process with what's called beginner's mind. Beginner's mind. Now, there's a book that I love that I want to talk about today, and it's called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. What I love about this book is it's, a, it's, an, it's an invitation to reshift thinking, to eliminate all that garbage that gets in the way, especially in the way of love. So I, I, I invite you to start, and by the way, for those who know me, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of my own book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? See, there's my name right there. I wrote this book. I'm so proud of it. And why I'm bragging about this and why I talk about this in every video, because our way to beginner's heart is through loving ourselves. And that's my invitation for you. Um, 
hold on a second. By the way, I did a podcast called Ignorance is Blessed. And in a way, that's what I'm talking about, is to be beginner's mind, is throw out all the old garbage when it comes to um, what you think about men, what you think about relationships, and approach it from a different perspective. This is why, ladies, I'm such a big proponent that you are in charge of your relationship destiny. You know, I'm wearing a superhero shirt. It's, it's a movie I watched recently. I love Fantastic Four. But let's just say I was wearing a Wonder Woman shirt. That's what I want to invite you to reach into your superpower of who you are on the inside, that wonderful, juicy, delicious person you are on the inside. And approach the process from beginner's mind. Because, and what I mean by beginner's mind also from a dating perspective is, look, we can always focus on what's wrong, but I want to invite you to focus on what's right, what's right with men. Because here's the thing, most men are good guys. They are. Most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. And just like what I shared with you in my own personal life, we're all dealing with something. So when we can view someone as a human being and not based on an expectation of what gender is and men are chivalrous and all you do is lean back and be in your feminine energy and then they will just come claim you because that's how it works. Yeah, that works temporarily. But if you really want a soul relationship, if you really want a deep, juicy relationship, then I want to invite you to go deeper yourself. And there's another book I want to invite you to read. I, this is a great book. If the Buddha dated, if the Buddha dated. This is taking out the gender expectations in relationship and looking at a man as a human being and not based on an expectation. By the way, ladies, women, men need to be doing this too. This isn't singular to women. This is absolutely, I invite men to do the exact same thing because when we take out the gender expectations, now look at, I'm not suggesting lowering one's standards. I'm not, and what I mean by standards, I'm not suggesting anyone lower boundaries, okay? I'm here to really invite to, is, is to look at someone just simply as a human being. And by the way, look at, I read about five years, no, about eight years ago, Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, said, at least here in the United States, and I know my audience is all over the world, is that the average American is a narcissistic dater, and she was talking about women just as much as men, because we kind of have this expectation that we want our best friend, our best lover, the most financially successful person, they're in charge, they're confident, all that, and yet we don't show up ourselves like that. And that's my invitation for you. That's why I'm such a big proponent of my book. That's why I, I talk about so many different books. Because look, you can sign up to some $5,000 video coaching program <laughs> and, and, and learn this, or you can spend about 180 bucks on 15 different books, okay? Um, or a dozen books, whatever the costs are, and really shift your life. Now, I'm gonna say, now hiring me as a coach is an investment, but what I teach you is something different as a coach. What I teach you is how to vet for emotionally available men, emotionally mature men. That's one of my gifts. And if you're single and looking for love and you want support on getting really crystal clear on who you are and how to vet. And by the way, I do this from the perspective of, I'm looking at you as a man and I'm, I'm noticing your blind spots, those places you don't see in your life. And this is one of the key areas. Uh, when I'm talking to a client, I'm noticing the negative patterns instead of the positive patterns. And that's my invitation for you, is to do a deep dive into yourself and approach the relation, the dating process with this new strategy. Can you do that? Can you do that for me? If you can, please post a comment below. Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. If, if you have any questions, I do my best to read these all because I want to shift perspective. I'm, I've said this in previous videos. I'm your big brother here. I'm doing my best to protect you from the wrong guys and help get you at least in the path of attracting a great guy in your life. Do you want a great guy in your life? Because there are good men out there. But just understand, just like even myself, and I do a lot of personal development work, we're all struggling on some level. And I think one of the first things we should do with this new strategy is start with compassion. Compassion for oneself and then compassion for others. If we can actually be sitting across from someone on a date and just have compassion, 
for both of them, both people doing it at the same time. Imagine how much better the dating process will be and it'll be less frustrating. Okay, I hope this is sinking in. I hope this is making sense. I hope this is resonating with you. And if it is, check out the links to a free discovery call with me. Check out my group, Midlife Love Mastery. Check out my books. And I also have a link to all my recommended books. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to a friend or a pet or even a stuffed animal and give it a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.